Welcome to Focus Tech Tips, your resource for reliable energy access. Hi, welcome to Focus Tech Tips. I'm Megan Kornman, Applications Engineer at Focus Americas. Today, we're going to be talking about how to match up PWM solar charge controllers with PV arrays. First, let's go over a few general concepts. Always remember that energy travels from higher voltage to lower voltage. Now, solar voltage must be higher than battery voltage in order for battery charging to occur. Also remember that PWM solar charge controllers do not do DC to DC conversion. PWM solar charge controllers use very fast switching to regulate both voltage and current for battery charging. So first, let's go over how a PWM charge controller works. Let's first look at a characteristic curve for a solar panel, also known as an IV curve. So some key points that you can see are the solar array short circuit current, the solar array maximum power point, and the solar array open circuit voltage. Some other key points on there will be the points that correspond to the battery voltage. You can see the range of a typical battery voltage mapped onto the IV curve. So since a PWM charge controller uses fast switching to regulate charging, when the switches are on, the point that the solar panel array will operate at will correspond to the battery voltage at that moment. When the PWM charge controller switches are off, the point that the solar array will operate at will be at the open circuit voltage. Over time, the point at which the solar panels operate at will trend towards the battery target charge voltage. This will typically be your absorption voltage, such as 14.4 volts in a 12 volt system, or possibly float voltage, which is typically 13.7 volts in a 12 volt system. Now some of you may be wondering why you don't measure the battery voltage or the open circuit voltage when you're measuring the solar voltage during charging. This is because a digital multimeter takes an average of this very, sweat, very fast switching happening many times per second. So what you'll either see is a weighted average or a root mean square value. And this goes for both the voltage and the current. The longer that the charge controller switches are off, the higher the voltage that you will measure, and also the lower the current will be that you measure. Now that we know how a PWM solar charge controller works, how can we apply it so that we can choose the best solar array for our system? First, let's start with the maximum power voltage. Typically, the highest battery charge voltage for FOCO solar charge controllers is going to be 15 volts for 12 volt systems and 30 volts for 24 volt systems. The goal for us when we're designing a system is to get the VMP of the solar array to be higher than that highest battery charge voltage. So we want the VMP to be higher than 15 volts in a 12 volt system and higher than 30 volts in a 24 volt system and this will maximize the power that we can get from our solar array. When a panel array has a VMP that's too high, it will lead to wasted power though, so we must be careful. A panel array with a VMP that's too low will lead to unusable power. On this IV curve, you can see what to look for. You can see that the VMP is higher than the range that we expect for our battery charge voltages. Now when you're looking at solar panel data sheets, what you'll want to look for in 12 volt systems is an array VMP typically between 16 volts and 19 volts at standard test conditions. You'll typically also be looking for 36 cell PV panels or something that says 12 volt nominal panels. For 24 volt systems, you'll typically want to look for a VMP on your solar panel that's between about 32 volts and 38 volts at standard test conditions. Typically, you'll also be looking for solar panels that have 72 cells or say 24 volts nominal. Now, many of you may be wondering, what about 60 cell panels? 
Sometimes they're compatible, but many times they're not, so we must be very careful here. Typically, the voltage is far too high for 12 volt systems, so you might only get between 30 and 50% of the rated power. In 24 volt systems, the voltage is typically too low, so again, you won't be getting anywhere close to 100% of the rated power. Now, some new 60 cell panels have very high power and their voltages are higher than typical 60 cell panels of the past. Some of these new panels are compatible, but it should be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. The next thing we'll want to check for when matching up our solar panels to our charge controllers is going to be checking for the maximum PV voltage and checking that it's less than the controller's maximum voltage rating. Don't forget that PV voltage increases in cold weather, so we want to be sure to account for temperature effects. The first thing we'll do is find the solar array VOC at standard test conditions. Don't forget that if you have panels wired in series, you'll need to add the VOCs together to get the total array VOC. The next step is to determine the lowest expected temperature for the install location. For places such as Canada or the northern US, that might be as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. For other places such as Central America, this might be very close to room temperature. After you've found the lowest expected temperature for the install location, you'll want to calculate how that affects the panel voltage. On the data sheet, you can check for the temperature coefficient for the VOC. You can use that value to calculate the change in voltage. Alternatively, you can go to National Electrical Code and find the safety factor that corresponds with your temperature. The worst case for many cold climates is as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius, and this corresponds to a National Electrical Code safety factor of 1.25. So that means that you should expect the voltage to be as much as 25% above the rating at standard test conditions. Next, check this value with the rating of the solar charge controller at its maximum voltage input. You must make sure that the controller's rating is greater than the value that you calculated for your solar array. Otherwise, you should choose a different charge controller or choose a different wiring configuration for your solar panels. To ensure that controllers match up with solar panels, we'll also want to check for the maximum expected current from our solar array. First step, we'll want to find the PV array short circuit current at standard test conditions. Be sure to add the short circuit current of any panels wired in parallel. Next, you'll need to consider the National Electrical Code safety factor for charge current. The safety factor is 1.25 times greater than the standard test condition maximum current for the solar array. Sometimes, the solar radiation is also greater than 1000 watts per meter squared, so you can actually get more current than the rating on your data sheet. The charge controller's maximum current rating should be greater than the short circuit current of your solar array. Also, the charge controller's overcurrent protection should be greater than the short circuit current of the solar array after accounting for the National Electrical Code safety factor. In summary, we want to make sure that we remember that voltage must be higher at our solar array than our battery for charging to occur. To optimize our usable solar power for battery charging, we want to make sure that our solar array VMP is higher than our highest expected battery charge voltage. If the solar array VMP is too high or too low, this will just lead to wasted power. Lastly, we want to make sure to compare specs and account for environmental effects. The PV array open circuit voltage, after accounting for temperature effects, must be less than the controller's solar voltage input rating. Also, the PV array short circuit current must be less than the charge controller's maximum charge current rating in all weather conditions. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more FOCOS Tech Tips. For more videos and information, go to www.focos.com. FOCOS – Making Reliable Energy Access Possible. Anywhere, Anytime, Any Grid.